right now we are uh, pleased to have from the Battle Creek Can program, Laura Zale is our uh, guest. Good morning, Laura. Good morning. Did I get it right? You did. Ah, I did, yes. Well, good. I've been practicing it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Laura is uh, actually, uh, you work for the Battle Creek Community Foundation? Yes, the Battle Creek College Access Network is a supporting organization of the Community Foundation. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're pretty much uh, a, a Battle Creek person. You were born and raised right in this area, right? That is correct, a Harper Creek grad. Wow, and uh, you know, not everybody sticks around and serves their community. Uh, is that something that was instilled in you when you were young? I mean, how did you come to, uh, to, to work for a community foundation and work for our community? Yeah, no, not necessarily. Uh, it wasn't instilled in me to stay. I actually left and traveled a bit and then uh, came back and was looking for a job everywhere but Battle Creek. I was one of those people that said I didn't want to stay here and Lo and behold, I landed a job at the Community Foundation and I've been here for about six years now. So uh, okay. it's great to be in the community still and I wouldn't have it any other way. Excellent. You mentioned travel. Um, you were in the Peace Corps in Africa. I was. Uh, and I'm very interested about that. Where, When was this and where, where, where were you? So I was in the Peace Corps from 2010 to 2012 in the, uh, the West African country of Burkina Faso, uh, formerly known as Upper Volta back in the 60s. Um, and I lived there for two years in a little tiny village in the middle of the country called Rasomde, which means the good day in their language, which was a, always a good reminder on the tough days when you're in the middle of a, you know, West African bush with, your, I was by myself, um, and so I just, Worked with the community. I did a lot of work uh, with the local midwife at the health clinic on maternal and infant health. Helped deliver a few babies. Wow. Um, and then worked at the middle school. I did um, teaching English. So French is their national language that they learn in the schools, but they also learn English starting in middle school. So I was able to help the English teacher start an English club and prep the students for their middle school uh, and exit exam. So uh, kept busy in a lot of different ways, but Mostly education and healthcare were my two focus areas that I spent time on. Well, and and you're kind of still in education here, as we'll we'll hear in just a moment. But yeah. How did how did you? This was right after college, right at Michigan it was. State. Yes, yes. So I went to Michigan State, and um, actually, uh, kind of leads me into my work. I started pre med, and uh, after about a year, you know, a lot of people decide they want to change, and so that was me. I decided pre med wasn't for me, and I'd been fortunate to travel the country and a bit internationally uh, in high school. And so I uh, kind of leaned towards anthropology and the study of culture and people. And as I was talking to my advisor, as I neared the end of graduation, there's not necessarily a clear path for anthropologists. There's a lot of different ways you could go. And so being an undecided college graduate, I had no idea what I wanted to do. And so on my advisor's wall was a poster for Peace Corps. And I said, well, what's the Peace Corps? And so he told me all about it. And actually, uh, on occasion, there are billboards on I-69 when you drive north from Battle Creek to Lansing. Uh, there is a billboard for Peace Corps. So that also caught my eye when I would come home on the weekends and drive back. And um, so their marketing campaign uh, worked for me anyways. And so I decided to join. And uh, Did your parents yeah. freak out? I think they thought I was a little crazy. Yeah, yeah, they weren't quite sure what to expect. So um, I was the first in my family to ever do anything like that. So, but I think uh, my dad was able to actually come visit and actually see my work and my house and village and everything. And so uh, I think he appreciated being able to see kind of where I was and what I was doing and put a, some faces to names of people that I talked about and everything. Burkina Faso, it's landlocked. It's kind of in the upper and western part of, of Africa. Uh, I mean, when you first got there, what what did you think? Yeah, so it is uh, definitely on the edge of the desert. So it gets hot in the day, kind of cool at night, not as cool as like if you're actually in the desert. Um, you know, it's a lot, very dusty. Everybody told us how clean we were and we didn't realize that, you know, the dust just kind of layers upon you after you've been there for two years. Huh. Um, and so 
we always said that when new Peace Corps volunteers come in, we're like, oh, you're so clean. <laughs> and so, um, but no, it's, they're lovely people. They're very welcoming. Um, the culture is very rich and just um, so kind and open and understanding and uh, it just saying even good morning in their local language. They just are over the moon by you even attempting to connect with them. So um, they, they love, and I, I actually married a man from Burkina Faso, so we still go back often and have family there. Um, so that's, you know, a story for another time, but uh, it is uh, sure. um, quite, uh, it's a very interesting culture, and I'm glad I got to experience it and live there for two years. When you first went over there, did you speak French or their native language at all? Um, I took a course at LCC the summer before I left for, like, French 101. Mm -hmm. um, so I had very, very basic knowledge. But other than that, that was it. So Peace Corps does train you. Uh, we did two months of in-country training before we were kind of set on our way. And um, then by that time, I was, you know, mediocre in French. I could get by. And then sure. I had to learn the local language on my own. Um, and not many people in my village spoke French. Uh, being a you know mid village in the middle of nowhere, schooling wasn't necessarily an option, and so French is what's learned in school. So I really had to pick up the local language more very quickly because I couldn't communicate in French with hardly anybody. So. Wow, very very interesting. And uh, but we're here to talk about BC <laughs> Can, but I, I I had to ask you about that though because uh, every once in a while I meet a student who does the Peace Corps, and I, I just uh, I'm fascinated yeah. by it. You know, uh, I've met. Uh, people who have gone to Tanzania and even Mongolia. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's very interesting to hear the stories. But uh, BC CAN, it's obviously an acronym now. It is. What does it stand for? Uh, that BC CAN is for the Battle Creek College Access Network. College Access Network. Well, give us a quick overview. What's it all about? Yeah, so we are all about promoting college and supporting students to and through college, um, but we're really trying to change the definition of college. We know a two-year program or a four-year program isn't for everybody, um, but there are certificate programs skilled trades, professional trades, apprenticeships, um, and various routes that students can take after high school and even adults now that, you know, maybe they're reconsidering, you know, having that midlife crisis and wanting to go back to college or school and you know, enter a new career. Um, and so we're here for them too, but mostly we work with high school students as they're nearing graduation and helping them come up with a plan. What's your plan after high school? What do you want to do and how are you going to get there? Um, we know that by 2025, 60% of jobs in Michigan are going to require some sort of certificate or degree. And right now in Michigan, um, our degree attainment rate, so those young adults, uh, working adults, are only at about a 35% rate. So we've got some work yeah. to do yeah. um, to be able to meet the needs of the workforce um, and the demands of employers in our community in the next few years. Laura Zale is uh, with us. She is the BC CAN program officer, the College Action Network. Did I get that right? College Access Network. Access Network. Action's good too. Action, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, let's let's talk about a little bit more of the nuts and bolts, the core of what BC Can does. Yeah, so we're all about supporting students, as I mentioned, to call, getting them to college, and again, college being that broader definition of any post-secondary education. Um, and so we uh, re recognize that with college comes barriers, and one of those being academics, so SAT prep. Uh, wow. So we do offer free SAT prep workshops in the fall and spring uh, for mainly juniors, but we do open it up to sophomores because we know that juniors do take the SAT in the school during their junior year. So we do offer that to help students prepare. <coughs> Excuse me. And we also do um, FAFSA workshops in the fall. Mm -hmm. So the FAFSA is the free application for federal student aid, which students complete <coughs> excuse me, to either receive um, student loans or that federal Pell Grant. And oftentimes the FAFSA is then needed to receive other scholarships. And so we conduct workshops and host completion events for students to complete that FAFSA um, and the parents um, in order to get that sent to the school to get some financial aid and assistance for them that way. 
All right, uh, 823, we're going to learn a lot more about uh, BC Can in just a minute. Thank you. <laughs> I, that came out of nowhere. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mary Lou Retton, and I want to talk to you about something I haven't liked to talk about until now, my menopause. All my life, I've had energy, energy to win gold in 84. But when menopause hit me, with the hot flashes and night sweats, I began to feel sluggish every day. That all <coughs> when I discovered Ambrin. Ambrin Thank you. Me the other day. Oh, my God, it was terrible. By helping to restore your hormonal balance. Mm. Amberin is 100% drug free, estrogen free, and clinically tested. Amberin is America's number one menopause relief supplement. Thanks to Amberin, my fear of hot flashes is gone. My Good to go, or do you want me to play another one? And my I'm good. Is All right. Give Amberin a try and see what it can do for you. It works. It really works. Hurry to your Walmart, Walgreens, Target, and other fine retailers nationwide. Laura Zale from BC Can is with us. She talked about a couple of barriers to uh, higher education. Obviously, the money and uh, you know getting uh, students at least uh, involved in figuring out what aid is available. That's a big thing. And SAT workshops. What about just knowing what in the heck you want to do? Yeah. So as I mentioned in my story about myself, sometimes students just don't have an idea of what's out there. <clears throat> I thought we'd taken care of this. I'm sorry. Um, and so we do a lot of career exploration help for students. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the first one being in 10th grade, we host a community-wide sophomore future track event where students um, get to kind of tell us a little bit about through a registration form what they might be interested in doing. And then we try and pair that interest up with the local business or organization for a day so they can go get a hands-on first look experience at what that career is really like. And a lot of the feedback we get from students is either, yeah, this is really what I want to do. This solidified that or, wow, I really learned that that's not what I thought that job was. Um, I, you know, don't want to work with blood if it's, you know, you know, something in the medical field that they thought they wanted to do. And so it, it can be eye opening both in a good way and a, oh, that's not what I want to do way. Um, and so that's definitely um, something we've been doing for eight years now in the community um, and thank our partners and employers that uh, help make that event possible. And we also do a pathway publication. Uh, we've been doing this for two years now that we publish in the shopper um, every September, shortly after back to school. And, and we highlight some hot jobs uh, that are in the community and pathways to get to those jobs uh, through education locally. So we try and focus on our partnerships if students are still in school with the Calhoun Area Career Center and opportunities there, and then also at Kellogg Community College. So it's, it sounds like there's a lot of interaction with the local schools. We talk a lot with the various <clears throat> local schools, especially Battle Creek Central. I mean, they're trying to do all of these things too. Uh, do they look at you as a partner or a resource? Or Yeah, both? definitely we are a resource in the community um, for students. So if, again, if people have FAFSA questions, they're always coming to us if they want to know the best route to um, enter into the workforce, how to get some work experience. Um, we have partnerships with the schools and also with employers that we can tap into to kind of help guide students in that right direction. So if we don't know the answer, we definitely can figure it out and get a student that answer. Yeah, and all of this great information, um, it, it all kind of comes, you can have your own app. We do, yeah. Um, and the other career exploration opportunity we do have, though, is the healthcare pipeline program that I did want to hit on. Um, oh, yeah. That was um, something we've been doing for two years now, and we're really starting to kind of grow um, specifically in the healthcare field. <coughs> Students that are um, maybe not sure what they want to do. Um, not necessarily those students that know that they want to be doctors, but we do start in eighth grade to kind of start exposing students to those careers. It's in partnership with WMU's medical school and wow. Kellogg Community mm -hmm. College. And the program is a, it's one Saturday a month and it's actually ran by um, medical students from WMU's med school. So it's kind of that near peer mentoring. They facilitate all of the learning sessions and um, really kind of, expose students to more than just being a surgeon or a nurse because there's a ton more careers than 
just those two in the healthcare field. And then we partner with KCC, so most of the sessions are held locally here in Battle Creek, so students can see what learning opportunities there are post-secondary wise uh, for students. As you get into this, do you, uh, I mean, I take it this program, you did not avail yourself of this program when you were in school or did you? No, I did not. Unfortunately, because it's only been two years in the making and we've mm -hmm. started in eighth grade and as it's a pipeline, we want to continue to follow these students and guide these students through their education and get them into a career. So the idea is really to partner them with an employer once they graduate graduate from high school, hopefully with a credential or on their way to a credential or a degree, um, and then keep them local as well. Do you ever find yourself saying, wow, I, I could have used this when I was in high school? Definitely. And when we talk to parents, they're like, we needed this for our older kids or for myself. Um, and so we're really excited to really um, start with the first two cohorts of students and guide them through this pipeline and hopefully you know, encourage that passion for healthcare uh, and whatever specific career that they find and get them a, a career here in Battle Creek with an employer. What does the free app do? The free app is uh, one way that we communicate with students and parents locally since we connect with so many. Social media is one way, but we have our mobile application, Battle Creek Can or BC Can is what you would search in the Apple or Google Play stores. Um, and we can send you push notifications. You can stay up to date on deadlines and opportunities and different things. Um, we send out tons of information all the time, um, but it's just one way to keep up with news and what you need to be focusing on if you're either thinking about going into college or in college and just need that simple reminder to uh, apply for FAFSA or scholarships. So in the meantime, Laura, if, if somebody has questions or wants to get more information, what should they do? Yeah, you can call uh, Battle Creek Can at 269-719-8228 or we have a website, Battle Creek Can. Dot org and um, you can gather lots of information that way. Our contact information, Terry and I are happy to help uh, field any questions you may have about college or financial aid or getting there. And um, yeah, that's the, the best way to contact us is either phone or through the website. We've got our emails there. All right, great. Battle Creek can dot org. Uh, Laura Zale, thank you very much for being with us. Thank Tell you. us all about it today.